We're just talking earlier on the program with the lieutenant governor about this big climate leadership event that happened late last week. The Port of L.A. was a sponsor. Mr. Soroka, can you talk to us about the role you see the port playing when it comes to climate solutions here in California? Well, the Clean Air Action Plan that was first designed in 2006 has yet to be replicated. We've done so much work reducing diesel particulate matter by 90 percent. Now the hard work comes. By 2030, we want all our cargo handling equipment to be zero emission. And by 2035, the heavy-duty trucks calling the port will be the same. Yeah. Uh, you are also using innovation to keep things moving swiftly at the port. There's a, a newer development there, something called the California Port Partnership. What is this? Uh, this is working with ports all around the world. And most recently, we worked with the lieutenant governor and Didi Myers, the director of GoBiz in Tokyo, to bring both the ports of Tokyo and Yokohama onto our green shipping corridor. That's only followed by the work that we've done in Singapore most recently last month. And all of this was led by our partners in Shanghai back last year. So the idea is to get cleaner fuels on these ships and bring them across the Pacific into Los Angeles. Uh, you're trying to do things greener and better and faster because, as you said, we live in this world. It's like we like microwaves. We like things done quick and easily, but not everybody is necessarily on board with all of the innovation that's been happening at the port. Uh, the automation of certain work functions has been one of the key sticking points in this ongoing impasse that we've seen in terms of a contract negotiation between the Dock Workers Union and the Pacific Maritime Association. At this point, they've been working without a contract since last summer. Uh, news broke not that long ago that they've reached a tentative agreement. Uh, but apparently, you know, there is still some sticking points. And the concerns are sometimes that technology is going to put members of the ILWU out of work. What are you hearing on the ground in terms of these negotiations and these fears about automation? Right. I think, first, we're weeks away from a tentative agreement on the entire contract, not months and not going into next year. So that's encouraging. Both sides are at the table, and a lot of hours are put in right now to get these last important pieces put together so they can come out in a unified front. On the automation or robotics perspective, only about 5% of the ports around the world have implemented this type of technology. We have a little more of a high percentage here with about three of our 12 terminals across the bay using automation. But from my, where I sit, it's very simple. We're going to see the technology advance even faster, but we cannot leave the worker behind. And that's in part why we're building the nation's first goods movement training campus at the Port of Los Angeles, along with our partners in Long Beach, to upskill and reskill existing employees and see what we can do to prepare folks for the ZE generation. What does that actually look like when you say upskill and reskill? And I'm sure people are hearing that thinking, okay, but what does that actually mean? My job for years, my dad's job before me was, you know, these jobs. What do those new jobs look like? A couple of examples. One, learn how to drive that hydrogen fuel cell or battery electric top pick drive the rubber tire gantry crane. It's going to look a little different and feel different than the diesel propulsion system. Second, mechanics working with wrenches tomorrow will be working with computers mm. to keep up this equipment. We want to make sure they have the best and brightest on the job, and that's our, our work to try to accelerate that training. I think one of the questions that members of the ILWU are going to ask is, is what's the pay going to be like? Because from what reporting I have seen in the Wall Street Journal is that wages is one of the last sticking points here. I'm really relieved, and I'm sure a lot of folks out there are as well, to hear you say a few moments ago that you think we're weeks away and not months away. Uh, but there have been some points of tension. Uh, last month, union members did not show up on the Good Friday holiday. Uh, they saw it as time that they rightfully had off. Others were seeing this more as a walkout. And retailers are really concerned because they remember what happened in the early days of COVID. They're trying to get ahead of things like back to school and the holidays, and they can't afford to have any days where people are not working for whatever reason. What, you know, if I'm a retailer right now, I'm head of the retail association, what are you telling me right now, given where we're at, to make me feel less concerned about all of this? 
Your timing is excellent. I spoke with Matt Shea, the CEO of the National Retail Federation, just this morning, along with some of his membership. About 15 percent of our cargo since this contract negotiation started has moved to the East and Gulf Coast. Folks are trying to de-risk their supply chains after what they witnessed the last three years. We believe that in addition to that, you've seen some economic bumps as well. There's still a lot of inventory in those retail warehouses. We're not buying as much as we did during COVID. We're spending money on restaurants and airplanes, et cetera. So it's going to be bumpy for a while, but we've got to get this contract done so it brings confidence back to the market and cargo to Los Angeles and Long Beach. On the area of wages, uh, for your viewers, let's remember that during COVID, the dock workers, the longshore folks with the ILWU, worked on average six days a week. They need to be paid what they're worth. And I know the Employers Association, the Pacific Maritime, is working diligently to make sure all these numbers fit the right way. But as we go forward, the compensation is going to be a big deal, as is robotics and automation health care, and other important areas. But I think we're coming down to the wire mm -hmm. on those last important issues. I always feel like when we talk to you, it's such a great, you know, uh, indicator of what's ahead. So I'm curious to see what's going on with our world economically and how that gets reflected at the port. One thing that we know for certain is that we are coming up on Fleet Week. And, you know, when people come out to see that, they might not get Arnold Schwarzenegger on the rooftop. I thought that was pretty cool. But can you preview for us some of the things that the public will get a chance to see at the port when that time comes around? It was great seeing the former governor down at all to see and looking at all the experimentation that they and the Port of Los Angeles are doing. For us coming up with Fleet Week, it starts on May 26th and runs through Monday Memorial Day. The activities are free to the public, so it's for families everywhere to come down and witness this real spectacular view. We're going to have vessel tours of the U.S. Navy, live entertainment. We're also going to have aerial shows and an expo right in front of the battleship Iowa that will have displays of military equipment. It's just going to be a true spectacular. We think about 100,000 or more visitors will come out just for that four-day weekend. Exciting stuff. Gene Soroka, thank you for dropping by to tell us about it. Alex, great to see you as always.